What up, what up, what up? It's your boy B. And I'm back, Luke Skywalker. And uh, here to talk to you guys today about how to fully take advantage of being in what they're calling a quarantine. But if you rearrange your brain, rearrange your mind, um, how to take full advantage of being in the cocoon. And uh, many of us know what a cocoon is. A cocoon is something that a caterpillar enters into so that it can uh, start the transformation process into a beautiful butterfly. Uh, the way nature is, the, uh, the thing that has uh, had its existence from crawling on the ground and, and uh, being amongst everything that could devour it it has the ability to enter into a cocoon state and uh, and stay there for a while and transform into a beautiful butterfly. It comes out with wings. So this video is to share with you information on how you can take full advantage of uh, the opportunity to sit still. Uh, many of us, you know, a lot of times we don't give God his time. We only go once a week and God won't God they say God is a jealous God so God wants his QT you know he wants his quality time and I've I've shared this in many countless videos but if you don't give God his time he'll make you give him time because you are his vessel that's the only reason why you're here the only business that you're here to do is kingdom business this is a dominion uh, aspect. God is here to take over this earth. He isn't here to to allow you to enjoy the paganistic uh, things, uh, beliefs, or work with your physical body. God is here to show you how to work with the way he works, to work with his mind. His presence in you is a gift, um, and you are to do it. So there's a scripture in Romans 12 and 2 that says, do not conform, I want to break this down, do not conform to the things of this world. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So what does that mean? I know a lot of us, I, I, I'm here to really break the seal of scripture so that you can get an understanding if you don't have a, a, a full understanding of the word. What does Romans 12 and 2 mean? Do not conform to the things of this world. That's simply telling you, don't believe in the things that you're physically seeing physically hearing, physically experiencing, everything that you encounter about this world with your five senses. Transform your experiences, transform what you are seeing simply by the renewing of your mind. And how do you renew your mind? There are, are principles that have been kept from God's children. Spiritual principles, spiritual laws that allows you to literally transform everything that you see. It says in Hosea 4 and 6 that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Now, it's not talking about knowledge about real estate, knowledge about how what business opportunity to take advantage of, or, or knowledge about how do I get in on these stocks. No, 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 no. All knowledge and all information that the, the scripture talks about is spiritual knowledge. Our people perish, God's children perish due to the lack of knowledge of how to win in this world, how to spiritually win so that you can physically win. So the only knowledge that you should be seeking, the only thing that you should be taking advantage of is the opportunity to allow your conscious mind to rest. Many of us have been running, 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 trying to make a way. And here it is that God has provided a way not only for you to sit still, but for parameters to be taken to, to allow you to consciously rest. Hey, everything's going to be all right. You got food on your table today. That's all you need. Jesus tells us in scripture, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you should wear, what you should do. He said the pagan run after these things. People who don't believe in the God that you believe in runs after these things. But simply, he said, you can't change one color or strand of hair on your head. You can't make it great. So you know you can't do anything else. The only thing that you can do is God. 
is believing God. So what you need to do is understand how to transform your mind, how to reprogram your brain. What do you need to do? You take this time. And if you got kids in, or in your house, you say, man, I got these kids running around. You need to tell them and demand that they sit still. You need to demand that they sit still and learn how to know the true and living God. The only classroom that you need to be teaching. One plus one ain't going to help them in this time. One Learning one plus two ain't going to help them in this time. You need to teach them the living word of God and show them how to apply his principles. There are certain things that you need to do. You need to understand. I'll put it in here. Matter of fact, let me see if I can do it right now. I'm going to drop a link to you all that I recorded these uh, things about a year ago. Oh, I'm sorry, about three or four years ago. And what it is, it's affirmations. Affirmations. What are affirmations? Affirmations are a specific arrangement of words. I dropped the link in there. It's a specific arrangement, arrangement of words, divine words, that you repeatedly hear. Faith comes by, this is what scripture tells us, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Many of you are only hearing what the news is. And he says in scripture, if my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways, the only thing wicked is what you believing in something external of yourself. You believing in what somebody else tells you that does not line, in, line up with the word of God. If my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways and humble themselves, then and only then, you understand what I hear the land? And the land is in between your ears. And there's the thing, you have the ability to transform your world. There may be chaos all around you, but if you know how to reprogram your own mind, your own state of consciousness, your own belief system, you have to rewire this brain. You have to rewire this brain. I've dropped a link in here for free. This nonprofit that we started years ago, I chose to give away everything. So why'd you give away all your wealth, Brian? Why'd you give away all your real estate? Because God called me to do kingdom business. I knew, I didn't know what specifically was going to happen. I don't want to give you that understanding, but God was showing me things and it was things for me and I was sharing with people around me and a lot of people got ready and a lot of people prepared. My entire post, my entire wall is dedicated to showing you that I gave up millions. I could have easily become a multi-billionaire. After him, I saw his wisdom. So I'm telling you, use this time wisely because you can come out and be able to take mental flight over your situation. Your situation is an earthly problem. The problems that you have is an earthly problem. And you are able, you have the ability, you have the gift to enter into a cocoon, the gift of God to take advantage of this, to enter into a cocoon, a cocoon-like state. In a quarantine is what the man calls it, but we're going to call it what nature calls it, a cocoon. And we're going to take full advantage of being in this phase so that we can transform into a divine being with wings. Able to take mental flight. You, the only savior that you're going to have out of this, he says in scripture, Jesus tells us that the, the kingdom of heaven, some of us are looking, Jesus coming back, Jesus coming back, looking on the outside and clearly in scripture, if you just read it, he says the kingdom of heaven will not come by observation. It won't come by you what you can physically see. He says the kingdom of heaven is inside you. It's going to come back from within. God planted the kingdom of heaven in your mind. So it's going to rise up from the inside of you like a Trojan horse so that it can't be attacked. And you have the ability to go inside this kingdom of heaven right now and not think about anything else. So those affirmations that I put in here are specific affirmations so that.
turn on the light bulb on the inside of you. You got to transform yourself by flicking on the light switch, the positive state of mind. And the only way that you can change the channel of your life right now, if you're, if you're fearful, if you're worrying, if you're scared you're going to get infected, if you're scared you're not going to have any income, those are all things that the devil says. The devil is simply the enemy that's opposite of God's faith. God's faith, God's word said that with his stripes I am healed. All I have to know that God is the voice in me. God is the presence in me. And when I speak from God, when I speak as God, when I use my God power, I have all power in my veins. It ain't nothing that can come against a child of God when you understand this. And so our nonprofit, all God's children, is geared towards giving out the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And he says, seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33, I believe, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, which in another scripture he says is on the inside of you. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, which is on the inside of you. And then all of these things that you keep inboxing me and asking me about, Brian, how do I take advantage of real estate? How do I take advantage of stock? These things will not come to you if you don't seek God's first. God's wealth is laid up for the righteous. And the righteous are the people who chose to think correctly. Righteous is a, is a, is a, a, um, a word that scripturally means to correct thinking. Correct thinking is spiritual thinking. And his wealth is, is laid up for those who take advantage of this information of learning how to think spiritually. You got to turn off all distractions. Click on that link in this video. And let this play repeatedly in your mind as it reprogram it. Recite them out loud. It's going to be a lot of I am affirmations. I am healthy. I am wealthy. It's a specific divine arrangement of everything that I said to myself over and over and over and over again. When my family, when my friends, when my followers, everybody thought it was crazy until the fruit started happening from the seeds that I began to plant. You have a garden in your mind. And the seeds that you plant are things that you repeatedly say to yourself. Some of you don't realize that you always have an internal conversation going on with yourself. It's so on autopilot that you don't realize that you are seeing the fruit and the harvest of what you've been saying to yourself. Everything that you're seeing, you're picking from the tree of life. You're looking, you're grabbing the fruit from the tree of life right now. If you're not experiencing optimal health, optimal abundance, peace of mind, all of the gifts and qualities of tilling your garden, as he's told us to do in Gene is, Genesis 1. Till the garden, work the garden. How do we work the garden? You believe in a paganistic system that tells you that the only way that you can produce for yourself is by physically working. God ain't put his children here to work. Not physically. The only thing that we were here to work was our mind. And how do I work my mind? The hardest thing that there is to do for a paganistic believer is to sit still and trust God's process. A paganistic believer or a satanic believer believes that he has to physically go out and do what a child of God trusts God to do. I sit still. I sit still for 15 months straight in my house letting God handle everything for me. Everybody around me sit and watch. Man, you ain't going to get up and do nothing. You ain't going to go. No, I ain't doing nothing. God said in his word, be still and know that I am God. So here's how I work my mind. You don't just sit still and wait. You got to work your guard. So how do I work this guard? This is the knowledge of God. This is the knowledge that has been helped. His people perish because they don't have this knowledge. Share this information. I know you're locked in right now, but share this information. Share this information with others. There are people who, who believe in a certain aspect of God. And now, because we are in the revelation of Scripture, the veil of Scripture is being broken. So when that happens, all types of plagues and different things are going to come up on the earth. This is Scripture. So now you're breaking the seal of information. You're getting access to divine information, which has been hidden from the enemy so that God's children can receive it. So what you got to do, <clears throat> is when you sit still, you have to work this garden. And the way we work this garden is we simply recite words 
over and over and over to ourselves. You know how you don't like a song sometimes, but you keep hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, and then it becomes your favorite song? You have to program success consciousness in you just like that. You have to program a belief consciousness in you just like that to where you hear it so much to where you get tired of hearing it to where it becomes implanted in your DNA and your DNA begins to reflect everything that you are on the inside. You have to transform your mind. There's a link that I posted in here on these comments that you can just click on. This has already been prepared for you. The hard work has been done. The hardest thing to do is to sit still. Let me go with this. So here's a thought. The hardest thing for anybody to do is sit still. When you get bored, this is because the outside world is not pleasing your spirit. You have to go in God. So what you do is you work your garden your, between your ears by simply working to become the version of yourself right now that you desire to be. Turn off all distractions, all things that you look at that remind you of your old self. And you have to simply become the version of yourself that you desire to be. How do I do that? This is by living, mentally living in the Sabbath day. How do I mentally live in the Sabbath day? What is the Sabbath day? The Sabbath day says that all things are created. All things have been created. And knowing that all things have been created, that means that mentally every version of myself already exists. Every aspect of myself already exists. That means the 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 aspect of myself that is in ill health and the aspect of myself that is in optimal health. It already exists mentally. The, the, the poverty version of myself exists. The wealthy version of myself exists mentally. So understanding that you unconsciously have been dwelling in the negative version of yourself because you're seeing the fruit of it. So what you have to do is you have to the word work in the Hebrew text means to become. You must become the highest version of yourself mentally by working your garden. So now what I do is I get my mindset. I sit still and I sit still and I begin to reverence and thank God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I don't thank him for anything specifically. I just thank him for being. Thank you for being. Thank you for allowing me to exist. Thank you for allowing me to be in my right mind. All of these things that we heard our ancestors say and our grandparents. Thank you for giving me my right mind. Thank you for giving me access to knowledge, God. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for breath. Thank you for everything. Thank you for my toes wiggling. And I begin to just express gratitude in all different aspects of not outer things, but inner things inside my heaven. That I thank you for my eyesight. Thank you that I can hear clearly. Thank you for my optimal health. Thank you for my nose. Thank you for my skin color. Thank you for my hair, God. I begin to thank him. And then when I begin to thank him, I become more receptive. My conscious mind moves out of my problems. And into a place of gratitude. And now what I'm doing is I'm giving. I'm spiritually giving my whole tithe to God. This is all he wants from us in Malachi 3 and 10 is our attention. The only thing that you can pay God is your mental attention. So now he says, when you test me in this law, bring your whole tithe, your whole mindset into me, into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. When you bring your whole attention into God, 100% of yourself, he says, test me in this law and see will I not open up the floodgates of heaven and rain out so much blessings that you won't have room enough to store it. So what is he saying? Now that I've brought my attention to him, I'm giving so I know I'm going to receive. I'm giving God my whole self. So then and only then. I don't have my old way of thinking with me in, in God's presence. I've shed it, the blood of all of that. I've killed that old man, right? I've, I've become circumcised in the spirit. And now that I've circumcised my, my, my old beliefs, I've stepped into a place of gratitude and receptivity mentally. And then I choose the image. I call in the version of myself that I choose to be. 
if that's the wealthy version of myself, I say, how would it feel if I were wealthy? How would it feel to be wealthy? How would it feel to have more money coming in monthly than I need? How would it feel to have optimal health? These feelings begin to rush into my spirit because I'm receptive now. And when I give these spirits, I'll be like, oh, thank you, God. I can feel it. I can feel his presence. I'm telling you the secrets of scripture. I begin to feel his presence. Thank you, God. And the work is holding on to this feeling. It is the best sensation that you could ever imagine. I feel so relieved, God. And it's like everything that I wanted, I'm having it in my spirit right now. Everything that I desire, I'm having it in my spirit right now. I don't need physical evidence. And the work is holding on. I feel so relieved and I feel so supported. Thank you, God. Ooh, thank you. I feel so relieved. I did it. Thank you, God. And inwardly, this is a true statement. Thank you, God. I did it. I did it. I did it. And all I got to do is thank you, God. And it says, whatsoever you desire when you pray, you simply believe that you have already received it. There is everything in me that goes with me already receiving my presence, this presence, this state of myself, this version of myself. I feel right now that I received it. If you believe and feel that you have received it right now, it's yours. The work is in walking around in this feeling, speaking from this feeling. The moment you catch yourself speaking anything outside of it already being done, you have returned back to your old way of thinking. If you are ill health right now, thank you, God. What would it feel like to be healthy? Oh, thank you, God, for optimal health. I feel optimal health. Thank you so much. I feel so relieved that I am so healthy. I am so immune. And I wear this feeling, thank you, God. And so when it says when Jesus, he walked around in thanksgiving and prayer, he walked around vibrating in the version of himself, in the completed. I feel so complete. I feel so spiritually whole. See, you may not be physically whole right now, but you are a spiritual being and you have the divine birthright to be spiritually whole. And if you are spiritually whole, this goes with the science of Albert Einstein. Energy equals MC squared. My spirit equals matter. So if I'm spiritually whole, then I'm going to be physically whole. If I'm spiritually immortal, I'm going to be physically immortal. See, you got to line your understanding up with the word of God. So now when I'm saying I'm spiritually whole, I'm calling in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I am spiritually whole. I am spiritually complete because God, you said in your word that everything was already created. So I already have everything that I wanted now that I'm spiritually whole. I don't need anything else, God. Thank you so much for giving me everything that I need. And I wear this vibration and I feel it in my solar plexus to where it rises up through the 33 vertebrae. The, the, the 33 vertebrae represents the age of Jesus Christ when he was crucified on the cross. And that energy from my root chakra rises up my 33 vertebrae and enters into my skull and illuminates my pineal gland. And it illuminates my pineal gland and the electricity forms in my brain. And I can feel the vibration radiating this image. I am connecting the feeling with the thought. And these images are now beginning to give and I begin to give them power through my feeling that has been radiated in my root chakra. By the presence of God, where the presence of God enters into my temple, it rushes into my temple, and this feeling begins to radiate up through my 33 vertebrae, and it illuminates my skull, and I begin to feel as if I am floating in this consciousness, thanking God for everything that he has already given me, and I no longer need to physically have it. Now I have just received my receipt. 
My spiritual receipt is this feeling, this illumination. And now I can now think from the place. I can think from everything that I need. I can think from already having it. I can speak from already having it. Oh, I surround myself with faith walkers because a paganistic believer, a satanic believer can't believe in things that they don't see. But a child of God believes in the invisible. Hebrews 11 and 3 tells us by faith we understand that the worlds were framed not by things that we see, but they were created by the things unseen. And so as a child of God, are you believing in the things seen? Have you forgotten who you are? You are a child of the light. You are a child of infinite intelligence. And this wisdom of God, when you begin to use this while you're in this cocoon phase, when you begin to use this ongoing power and you begin to do it daily, repeatedly, all the time, you begin to build an automatic subconscious belief system, the same thing that makes your heart beat without your conscious attention. The same thing that allows you to move your body without you having to think, I need to move my hands, my feet, etc. The thing, same thing that allows you to drive your car without having to think about driving a car. This begins to take over. So you begin to, to round up your 12 disciples, your mental faculties in you that allow you to have full control over it before the Christ in you resurrects, before the, tr the Christ in you returns. You want to have full control over these mental faculties to where all of these things become autopilot, to where you no longer have to try to be uh, uh, in a good mindset. You no longer have to try to think positive. You no longer have to try to radiate this energy. This energy now radiates all over your being. And when it radiates all over your being, goodness and mercy follows me as I dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You understand what I'm saying? In my father's house, there are many mansions, he says. There are many ways to think. In my father's house, there are many ways to think on the inside of me. That's my father's house. He says... In my father's house, there are many mansions, many ways of thinking in my father's house. He says, I, my spirit, I'll shed out my word to the outside senses and I will go and prepare one of these places. Meaning I will go ahead and begin to feel as if these things has already happened inwardly. I will go and prepare a place. I can already feel that it's already done. This is me leaving my body, stepping into the version of myself, the optimal, healthy, abundant version of myself. I will leave my body. This is me going to go prepare a place and I will feel as if it's already done. And then I will return my spirit. I will bring that spirit, that optimal, abundant version, healthy version, immune version of myself. I will return again into this body and I will receive this body. My wife, this is my wife. My spirit is the husband. Christ consciousness is the head. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I will return for my wife this body and I will receive her unto me <clears throat> so that where I am in consciousness <laughs> where I am in my state of mind where I am in feeling where I am there ye this body may be also I bring my body back to where my spirit is do you understand you are not your body you occupy your body. You are not this flesh. You are not of this world. You are a child of God. And you have the ability at any time to resurrect yourself from the cross, from the belief of human understanding. You can resurrect your awareness. Your mental awareness is not nailed to the cross anymore. Stop worshiping the cross. Stop wearing the cross. Stop honoring death. You are a child of God. You are the body of Christ. You have resurrected. You got these cross reminding you of death. Resurrect life. It's life after death. We are in the afterlife. If you would just deny all human understanding, it does not make sense to the man. Man will never understand God. He uses science to try to catch up with God's understanding. Man will never understand God. But when you become this God force, when you become God, you will understand God's word. You can't understand God's word from a human perspective. It does not make logical sense. But you can't understand God's word when you tell God to take over your temple. And this is what happens. You begin to meditate. 
And when you meditate, here's the science behind this stuff. When you meditate, you open up your mental vessel right now. If you are stressed and worried about any outcome, you don't know what's going to happen. Your conscious mind is like an artery that's closing up that won't allow blood to flow through it. Well, there's a spiritual force that can't get through a mind that is stressed. If you are stressed and worried, scared, fearful, etc., your mental vessel is closing up tighter and tighter, and God cannot get through that. So when you meditate, you open up your mental vessel, and it gets wider and wider. You got to understand, God ain't no fire hydrant. God is the ocean. And he's moving all around the ocean of life, spiritually, looking for the widest vessels to get through. And the more you open your vessel while you're in this cocoon, this quarantine, the more the God force can flow through you. And he's going to feed you wisdom and knowledge ongoing. Your knowledge that you need for your situation is going to come through you. And he may bring everybody around you that comes to you as a channel of God. He uses the wicked, what you see as the wicked, and he used the, 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 the good as well. He uses all vessels. And you got to understand that when you begin to get it and enter into this God power, this God force, everything becomes a channel of supply for you. Look at life as if it's being done for you. Rearrange how you're viewing this world. Everything that's happening is happening for the initiated. It's happening for the Israelites. The Israelites simply represent God's children. Even if you're not what a person would see as God's child, Jesus Christ came to tell us that even the Gentiles can be saved. So if you believe that blacks are gods, whites are gods, Asians are gods, whatever the case may be, Jesus came and said all of us can be children of God if we simply accept Jesus Christ in our hearts. How do we accept Jesus Christ in our hearts? We accept him by accepting the personality trait of Jesus. You go and read the book and the stories of Jesus in the four gospels, and you will learn the personality traits of Jesus. He was our big brother that showed us how we can be on this earth. Ye are all sons of God, children of the most high. So we all have this birthright. There's no one person privy to this information. All of us have the birthright. We can all be sons of God walking on earth, doing the same thing, healing the sick, raising the dead, healing the mentally sick and raising the mentally dead, resurrecting this information inside of all of us. It's buried in you. You have the birthright to dig it up out of you. Dig out of that grave, sons of God, and rise up. Thank you so much for your support. All of you that have been donating to All God's Children, I put the information in here. We really appreciate you. We will continue to bring this spiritual food to you so that you can take use of this time wisely. Make good benefits of this time that you don't have to do anything. Sit still and know God. He says, here's a, here's a, here's a, uh, 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 a tattoo. Be still and know that I am God. Let that be your only playbook. Join that movement. Get that in, ingrained in your heart. Be still and know that I am God. That is a movement. Also, join the Facebook group, All God's Children. We'll be giving out information. When they said the Messiah comes inside of you, when he returns, he's going to teach you how to eat. He's going to teach you how to think. He's going to teach you how to do all of these amazing things. So I want you to join that group. All God's children, and we'll be giving out the right type of information so that you can learn how to how to suppress your appetite, your physical appetite, and replace that those meals that you don't eat with the Word of God, with understanding, with meditation, with using this information I shared in this video. So, guys, I love each and every one of you. If 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 anything happens where these mediums shut off, just remember and know that I love each and every one of you. Inbox me if you need assistance in any kind of way, and uh, we are here to help. All God's children. Children, guys, have an absolutely amazing day, and I'll talk to you soon.